In this video, I'll show you how to compute an average rate of change for a situation that is modeled by the composition of two functions. Let's consider a situation where a rock is thrown into a pond, where it creates a circular ripple that travels outward. Let the function r of t be the radius of the ripple t seconds after the rock hits the surface. This table provides data for the radius of the ripple for each second after the rock hit the pond water. For example, at 3 seconds, the radius of the ripple was 6 inches. As the ripple travels, it displaces sediment on the bottom of the pond. We'll let S of r be the volume of the displaced sediment when the radius is r inches. Then, the total displacement of sediment is given by the function d that is formed by composing s and r. So, d of t is s of r of t. So, for example, at a radius of 6 inches, 30 cubic inches of sediment have been displaced. Our task is to determine the average rate of change of d of t with respect to t as t varies between 1 second and 3 seconds. I'll show you two different ways to think about this scenario. First, let's think about the average rate of change of sediment with respect to time from time 1 second to 3 seconds. It is a ratio of the corresponding change in d and the change in t. We can rewrite this ratio as delta s of r of t per an amount of change in time. Let's look at the first table. At time 1 and time 3, this gives us an amount of change in time of 2 seconds, with a corresponding amount of change in radius of 4 inches. Let's look at the corresponding radius values in the second table. This table tells us that as the radius varies from 2 to 6 inches, the amount of sediment varies from 10 to 30 cubic inches with a corresponding amount of change of sediment of 20 cubic inches. This means the average rate of change of sediment with respect to time, as time varies from 1 to 3 seconds, is equal to 20 divided by 2, or 10 cubic inches per second. But there is another way we can think about this problem. If we look at the first table, each time t changes by 1 second, the radius changes by 2 inches, from 2 to 4 to 6, and so on. So, when delta t equals 1, delta r equals 2. Similarly, if we look at amounts of change in time of 2 seconds, so when t changes from 1 to 3 to 5, the corresponding radii change by 4 inches. So, when delta t equals 2, delta r equals 4. We could continue doing this and would see that delta r is always twice as large as delta t, which we can describe as r of t varies two times as much as the variation in t. Now let's think about the other table. When the radius at time t goes up by 1 inch, the displaced sediment goes up by 5 cubic inches. So if delta r of t equals 1, delta s of r of t equals 5. Similarly, when the radius goes up by 2 inches, the volume of sediment goes up by 10 cubic inches. So, if delta r of t is 2, delta s of r of t equals 10. We could continue doing this and would see that delta s of r is always 5 times as large as delta r, which we can describe as s of r of t varies 5 times as much as the variation in r of t. Putting this all together, from this first relationship between the amounts of change in time and the amounts of change in radius, the rate of change of radius with respect to time is 2. And the rate of change of sediment with respect to radius is 5. Putting these together, we can determine the average rate of change of d of t with respect to time from t equals 1 second to time 3 seconds. This is the variation in d per amount of change in t. Since d of t is equal to s of r of t, this is the amount of change of the composite function per some amount of change in time, which is delta s of r of t per delta r of t times delta of r of t per delta t. In this scenario, this is equal to 5 times 2, or 10 cubic inches per second. And this is the second way of thinking about the rate of change of a composite function. 